new stream. Yes, yo. With the white stripe. Yes, that is how it is. That's how that's how you stream works. You said what? You and I need to lose weight. You say I'm losing weight? I need to. And so do you. You've gained weight. I've gained weight? <laughs> yes. Well, when the rates are saying that I've lost weight and you are saying I'm, I've gained weight. <laughs> you look bigger from the year ago. Oh, really? Yes. Well, I am bigger too. You better not be bigger. Oh, 180 pounds. Oh, my goodness. I am telling you, I need help. Okay. We need a prayer for that one. Me oh. too. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh my goodness. Pounds overweight. Forty-five pounds overweight. Really? Yes. I need help. I need prayer. Well, <laughs> call, call me. I will tell you what the latest thing that you can do. I have, I have lost a lot of pounds already myself. And stop eating. I know that, but <laughs> that's not so easy. It's not. It's not about eating. It's about just maintaining a routine. I can't, Annika. I have tried. <laughs> I would like the way it is around here. I try. I can't. It seems. Really? I need. I mean, I'm very sickly, and it's like, Lord, help me to get through this. Well, as far as I know, you are going to lose the weight. Because the picture you sent me a year ago, you were very, you, you had, there was no weight, nothing. You remember I was discussing that? Yes, I remember. Yeah. But now, oh my Lord, have mercy. <laughs> hmm. Well, you know, I really need deliverance from weight pain. We will. Well, um, tonight I want to begin to talk to everyone out there. Welcome you to the Dikai Mary show. Um, let me just let me just make sure we are recording on the phone line for those who want the playback. After this show, if you want to play it back on the telephone line, call. Four two four two zero three eight four zero nine, and then the access code is the same like when you are in the live conference. That is nine five five nine six seven pound. So if you wanna play back this conference, call four two four two zero three eight four zero nine, and they will ask you to press the pound sign for the latest conference and you just press the pounds and begin to listen to the one of the one we are just doing. Please enter your pin followed by pound. Please wait. This conference is being recorded. Let me just stop something. Let me pick up a noise. There we go. Mm -hmm. Hello, Father. This is Nagesh. Nagesh, how are you? I'm doing it. Thank you. Welcome to the Dikai Mary Show, and uh, you are joining many people from around the world who are um, who are watching by UStream. Um, 
you can if you if you are by your computer any of you who want to watch the show uh live as it's happening now just go to your uh to your this thing to your search and type in there t h e t like tom h like hen e like elephant there idika imeri show and you can click on it and it is on right now um so you can watch it on your computer live but if you are watching it both on your on 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 the video live and you are also on the conference call line mute um put a headphone into your computer or into your tablet that you are watching this program and um and so that it will not echo back to us here okay and um, okay father okay and also if there are people around you wherever you are in the world and you are watching or you are in the conference call please um especially those in the conference call um if if there is a noise around you like a, a, a phone um someone is cooking laundry uh, kids are making noise and happy about then you can mute your phone mute it press the mute button you will still be hearing what we are doing here but we will not be hearing what you are doing okay so let's begin Okay, good. Um, the spirit of sudden death is real. Brothers and sisters, death is a principality. Death is an arch fallen angel. Death is not from God. God is not the author of death. Neither is he fascinated by it or lost it. I am not interested in people dying. But since I am a peaceful person and to balance it, I'm also I'm also interested in warfare. If if you give people opportunity for peace, they refuse, then you go into warfare with them. I'm serious. I am very Jewish in nature. Um, the enemy introduced war to to the heavenly realm and to the earth realm. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. I want you to know that sometimes war is inevitable. I know that many of you do not like war. Many of you don't like war. You want peace. But let me tell you tonight, there is some way you will reach in life. You become wealthy, you become rich. There is some way you reach in life, you become great and famous. War will break out against you. So you begin now to learn how to take care of what is coming in the future. Because when you become wealthy, when you make it in life, you have a great job. You are settling down. You are having the good things of life. Somebody somewhere gonna hate you. You better be prepared for it. To make war with those who want war and to make peace with those who want peace with you. God wants peace with you. Christ Jesus wants peace with you. And the devil and all devils want war with you you want war you get war i'm trying to find out how this is working out here so that i'm really relaxed okay um there are 
12. But I, I believe very strongly that there are more than that. I'm still researching the, the arch devils, the arch fallen angels. The, the arch fallen angels are also rulers, angels in big territories, the kingdoms of the world, nations, are negatively governed by arch fallen angels. And they are also governed by arch angels of Christ Jesus. The spirit of death is one of the fallen arch angels assigned with the department of killing people, of taking people out. The spirit of death is real. Huge fellow, very, very tall, covered with black to really make you feel frightened. Don't be frightened by him. If you ever see the arch demon called death appear in your room, stand up to him. Do not run. Don't shout. Face him and talk to him. And tell him in the name of Jesus, I do not ever want to see your face again. And he will never return back. Those who fell are those who are afraid. And let me tell you why you should never be afraid of anything in the world. Because you don't have a life. The life you are currently living is not your life. Somebody else, your life is in somebody else. Your physical body, mind and spirit is inside a God. A big G-O-D. His name is Christ Jesus. He is the custodian of your physical life. Therefore, you have no right to even fear. Fear, fear is a sin. Just like unbelief is a sin. Because you don't, you don't have any right to be afraid or to fear. Poverty and inability to believe God for your healing and receive healing and if the thing is stubborn to speak to that problem until that problem run away one day, if you don't do it, it's a sin. You are sinning against God. Because there are things that because your life does not belong to you anymore, it belongs to somebody else. Somebody else is in charge of it. His name is Christ, Jesus. Because of it, you can ask God, you can ask him for anything. Lucifer and all demons and devils are created they are created spirit they are not god they assume the name of gods and goddesses to fool human beings but they are not i have don't think that i'm just doing ministry i have encountered bell face to face some of you know this. Some of you, some of you, I, I have casted bell out of some of you. I've casted Leviathan out of some of you. I've casted the spirit of Lucifer out of some of you. I had a man that had 15 demons in him. All the way in Holland. They gave him witchcraft since he was a young boy. And the demons were lying to me that there were only three demons and my spirit would not agree. I told them, don't lie to me. You can lie to each other, but not me. Don't, I'm not here to fool with anybody. You can't fool with me. In the name of Jesus, how many are there? And they told me we are five. I said, shut up and talk. You liars, bloody liars. And then they said, we are 15. I said, okay, begin to go. I was hearing the hissing sound of different Creatures coming out of that man's mouth until the whole 15 demons vanished. <sighs> Death.
death is a real spirit. Let me share something with you. While many of you want to go to that side to ask for help, the devil is a liar. He's not capable of truth. He's not capable. It is not in him to be able to tell you the truth. He's not able. I want you to know that. So if somebody lies to you, that person belongs to the devilish camp. I'm just being truthful to you. So if you cannot help yourself in lying, then you should know the side you belong to. Number two, the devil is a thief. The devil is a thief. He steals people's joy. Anything God gives you, anything you work for, he want to steal because he is not happy to see you happy. Happiness is not part of his kingdom. The reason is because there can never be happiness in that kingdom. Number one, they all know that there is a time when they will all be finished. They know it. So how do you think they will ever be happy? So even if you hear demons laughing and devils laughing and wicked people laughing, it's just a matter of time. It's like you go to a trade fair and uh, you see them you see them uh, smoking and uh, barbecuing uh, pork chop, different parts of pigs. And then you see some pigs running around playing. It's just for a short time, those pigs will be on the grill. So it does not mean that because you see the pigs running around, the pigs are happy. Very soon they will be the one on the grill. It doesn't mean that because hey. doesn't mean that because you hear the you 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 see the the cows dancing on their way to the slaughterhouse because they don't know it's the slaughterhouse they are dancing to some to some good rock and roll and uh, and 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 uh, and trying to have their last sex eating their last corn drinking their last champagne. Do not think that, do, do not think that they are, they are, that all is well. Because they are not coming back from where they are entering. They will only come back in bones and pieces. So don't think that because God has a reason why he let the drama continue that is not going to come to an end. It will. I enjoy seeing human beings who think that they are something. I enjoy seeing God reduce them to nothing. I'm serious. Human beings who, who behave as though they are something. They have the power to give you a job, they won't. They have the power to change your situation, they won't. Your family members are like that. Many of your family members are very wealthy. But they do not want you to be wealthy. They don't want you to have anything. They want you to be a beggar. And they, and they will talk to you as though they are gods. And suddenly, sudden death takes them away. That's the only, that's the only side that I enjoy seeing sudden death take some people away. Evil people, I enjoy seeing them being taken away. Either they change, they repent, or they are taken away. And all that boasting come to an end. There's so many people, if I begin to mention their name, you have, where are they today? With all their boasting, where are they? Nowhere. Nowhere to be found. They're dead. These are reasons why sudden death comes to people. And before I tell you my own, I want to throw it open to you. Unmute your phone as far as there is no noise behind where you are or where you are. Unmute your phone and contribute. Why do you think sudden death comes to people? 
from whatever you know, share with me before I summarize it and we pray and go. I mean, I have been ministering daily for almost two weeks now, non-stop, non-stop. <sighs> I think, Reverend, because they've been so evil, I mean, to everybody, not just their family members. You know, there's no other way to change them. They're, they're not going to repent. Yeah. And they are so, so wicked. I, and so... They give them the grace to agonize you, you know, just be gone. If they are wicked like that, if people are really, really wicked, then you need somebody from the earth to tell God to take them away, to take them out, to do them in. Until people began to complain about their situation in Egypt, God did not raise Moses. Because remember what God said to Moses, I have heard the cry of my people, Israel, in Egypt until a human being talks to God, God will not take another human being out. If you want to pray for wicked people to repent, then pray. And if you wait and they keep taking people out, they keep destroying other people's life, until another human being rises up and says, oh no, God, take this person out then you will see it happen. Or, or like somebody like me that God has mandated from Jeremiah 1 verse 9 and 10, said, take people out. Then I'll pray for God to take people out. You see, until, let me put it this way, until, hmm, until someone cried out against Sodom and Gomorrah, God did not send the three angels to go. And on the way, one of the angels disappeared. Two went. Read the story. It was three angels that visited Abraham, and two ended in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Just go and find the story. One of the chief, the chief spokesperson of those angels disappeared and went back to, to heaven. Only two ended up in Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Why? Why did one go back? Well, they, you see, God doesn't waste energy. He doesn't waste people. Two were enough to take out that place. I mean, one angel can take out a million people. So why why do you need to waste energy? Oh, okay. Yeah, he didn't need three to be there. But three came to Abraham. The three of them spoke with him on the way to Sodom. But by the time they reached Sodom, only two reached there. The other three went back. The official one went back to go and report to God. Because, because remember what God said? He said, I am going to see whether the cry against the city of Sodom and Gomorrah is true. When somebody talks to God, God legally investigates it. That's why documentation is very, very important. Do not just pray for God to, to take somebody out. Make sure you have a legal backing why you want it so. And then when you present your case before God, you back it up with fact. You see miracles begin to happen. God will begin to take the enemies out. All over the Bible, you will see God taking evil people, wicked people. He removed them. Just as he threw the devil out, threw demons out, he will also throw humans out. Maria, you are right. People are so wicked. Many people are so wicked that somebody needs to complain about their wickedness to the Almighty. Somebody else should tell us why sudden death comes to people. So Maria, you are saying that certain people are taken out. Sudden death comes to people because they are wicked. So here you are saying that it is God who permit who permit them to be taken out. That's what you mean. Is that? Yes, I can give an example. I give was us. really young and my mom was raped by a relative and my mom cried a lot. I never saw my mom cry, but she was crying to the Lord. 
She said, why God this, you know, and last time I heard he had a heart attack and he was gone. I didn't even know until I grew up what had happened. And I've heard other family members too that their health was not doing very well, but that was the reason why that man was gone. And I saw him when I was a little girl, I saw his soul. And I told my mom that he was coming to take me. And my mom said, you tell him no, because he appeared three times to me. Okay. So when I'm older, I understand, you know, what happened. And I understand about wicked people. I didn't know until you started defining what was wicked, you know, because when you grow up in that kind of environment, you're so tough that something's not right, but you need somebody to explain it to you. But nobody has time because everybody's working. So I've been blessed to come across you where you're explaining in detail what is a wicked person. So I'm okay with them. Take them. I don't care if they're family members of mine. If they're hurting <laughs> other people, if they're hurting family members, they don't need to be on this earth. Good. You need to take them go away. Neighbors, go right ahead. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What if there are those people that are like wicked half the time and really, really good half the time? There's a lot of people like that. It's like the love-hate thing. There's like... Double-minded, it's almost like they're two personalities. What about those people? They need, they, okay, those type of people, sometimes some people are bitter, and they don't even know they're bitter. They don't even know it's passed down. So unless they get the proper education, and like you said, you either repent and change, or you go to hell. You, those are the options you have, and there's no excuse of not wicked part. I mean, about the wicked part and dying and taking them out. What do you do with those folks? Half the time they're doing really great, wonderful, and they're acting loving, and the other half the time they're past progressive, messed up, screwing up people's lives and causing misery. What do you do with them? We need to have a power with the reverend to figure out how to help them out to see yeah. if they really need deliverance, or ask God to take them out of help them or take them, God. Take them out of their misery. Yeah, they're, well, they're causing yeah. other people misery, too, is the thing. Yeah. yeah. They need to go. I can, if my family members, I confront them and I tell them, what the hell is your problem? Do you need some, <laughs> Do you need some Jesus? Do we need to call somebody to help you get your demons out? Because whatever somebody did to you, you have no right to be lashing on everybody in the family. I saw that to one cousin of mine. Why are you I picking it? Tell you you're crazy. My mom just look at me and tell me they're crazy. They don't believe in giant demons and all that stuff. They think it's all Look, if somebody said that, yeah. Our point is, um, when you're in war, there's no, there's no, there's no God. When somebody is after you, when you're going through so much, all of a sudden everybody cries for God. I don't care if you believe in God or not. All of a sudden there is a God. Even those people, they say that there is no God. Eventually they'll believe there's God. Like the Reverend said, when that plane went down, if there was anybody that didn't believe God, at that moment they sure believed there was a God. God, please save me. You know, there was you this. Know, Continue. Because, you know, when they see that, I've heard people say that they've even seen the devil come and get them. And they're crying to God, God, please help me, God, help me. Because yep. they didn't repent. That's why. Yep. The devil takes them up. I had a guy that told me they were in a, a crack house, smoking crack, all day, all night, the following day. On the second night, this is what he told me happened. The house was uh, turn, uh, the light was turned off, and everybody were getting high, having sex, drinking beer, drinking alcohol, and suddenly a phantom came into the house. A bad spirit entered. Everybody saw this big old demon appeared from the roof or from somewhere, and instantly. They said that their hair, everyone in that house, their hair was standing on the edge. <laughs> they didn't believe him. <laughs> they began to run. They began to throw out. They threw away their pipe and head, head for the street. Some people ran out of that place naked, I'm telling you. Yeah, they ran naked out of that place. He said he saw a demon right there everybody saw it and fled including the guy who owned the crack house ran for his life <laughs> why would demons not come you are smoking crack you don't know don't you know that when you begin to smoke crack that you're inviting demons yeah 
You can never, you can never, you can never give the demon a blowjob without him coming for a pay. <laughs> yeah, that's what some of the, some of the, these things, some of the, uh, some of the, some of the slams they use for a crack pipe is the, is the devil's penis. Really? You, yeah. Yeah, these are some of the slams they use for it. You can never go and suck on that thing and go free. A demon will come after you. Come on now. You can never begin to smoke some very strong kanja. You can never begin to smoke some, 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 some heavy marijuana. Oh my goodness. Without, 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 without spirit. But let me tell you, Rastafarian reggae is not just music. It's a religion, if you didn't know it. You better watch and see how reggae musicians, when they do the njambe, whereby they chant and dance all day, all night. Watch Bob Marley when he gets possessed and when he's dancing, you go and see. It's not just music, it's a religion. Rastafarianism is a religion. And as uh, 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 and uh, and uh, and uh, and after all, the, 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 the arch demon in charge of the entertainment world, his name is Reggae, anyway. And the Reggae beating, bang, bang, with that heavy, heavy drumming, is witchcraft music. Many of you are just enjoying, I mean, there are Reggae music that are just for fun and entertainment. But when you begin to hit some hard dubs, some rubber dubs, and some roots, down to the roots, you are into a different, you are into the spiritual realm, believe me. It's no longer music, it's a different, just like rock and roll, there are some rock and roll that they go into some spots, it's a different thing altogether. Yep. And these things are coming not for play, they are coming to kill you. Somebody else jump into it. What are the reasons why sudden death come to people? Please jump into this. Let's let's share it before I begin I begin to talk more about this and then we pray and leave this place. What about the people that are murdered, like the innocent like kids in the movie theaters, those idiots shooting and those people get murdered? What about them? Why did they deserve to die? That's sudden death. Yeah, that's sudden death. Uh, th th those are sudden dead, then simply it tells you evil took them out. Okay? Evil took them out, and that is why we, we that is why we as Christians, and, and as people who are born again and spirit-filled, we need to pray, not just intellectual prayer, prayer of the, of the mind, or prayer of meditation, or prayer of the brain, or prayer that our parent or church or religion or tradition taught us. We have to pray spirit prayer. Because when you are praying, the Holy Ghost will tell you who is coming to come and take your life and will tell you how to deal with the person. Did you guys not hear about what I did to a family? Did you guys not hear how somebody was to travel and they came and asked me and they said, Father, because most people call me Father because I'm a spiritual father or bishop. They said, Father, should we travel for this business or should we not? I told them not to travel, but to travel the following week. And they did not. The very, the, the very uh, semi-boss, luxurious boss that they have bought the ticket to travel, caught fire on the way. Everybody died. Have you not heard of angels making it impossible for somebody to travel? And the person, yeah. the person just, just by chance missed the airplane and the plane left without them and the plane busted up in the sky. The person was here complaining that he missed his flight. And in a few minutes, he heard that that flight caught fire and he's like, oh my goodness, he stopped complaining. <laughs> Think about that. You see, that is why we do not need to die like chicken. We don't need to die like a cow taken to the slaughter. 
when you pray spirit prayers, the Holy Spirit will tell you what is about to come. That's why sometimes you see me, I minister for like these two weeks, I've been ministering. Suddenly I disappear. And many people begin, where have you been? Where have you been? They complain, you have to be there. I'm saving my own back. I'm going to be filled back so that I can come back and minister to you. Because if you, if you don't know this thing, people will take you out. Someone walked into a restaurant and immediately he left. As he was sitting down there eating, the Holy Spirit said, leave this food and leave right now. He said, I just paid for this. The Holy Ghost said, leave. And he ran out. As he left, somebody walked right into that place and shot and killed everybody. We don't need to die like chicken. We are privileged people. Some drug people captured a pastor in a, in a restaurant and they behaved like they were all eating together and they told him to say his last prayer and uh, go out with them into the car. They were to drive him to somewhere and kill him. So he kept eating. Then he told them that he wanted to go to the restaurant, uh, to the restroom and, and use the restroom and come out. I mean, there's no way you can escape from that place. That guy went to the, restor uh, to, the, to the restroom and cried out to God and said, why should I die this way? How, how, why, how is that going to bring you glory and honor? And as he was saying it, the wall parted into two. The back wall of the restroom parted into two. It opened. It opened up. And he walked right into the street and drove off. Everybody heard about it. It happened in Mexico. I know of an assembly of God pastor that his deacon went and connived with, uh, with, with armed robbers to come. How did the armed robbers knew that the pastor had the money of the, or they had a special offering that, that, this thing, that Sunday to go and buy certain things? And one of the deacons went and connived with armed robbers and they came in the middle of the night to come and attack that pastor. But before they came, the Holy Spirit told the guy to take the money and take his family and that they should go to the to the they should go to the room, the room that that you can do, that lead to the to the to the back to the backyard. But there is there is no window. As they went there, the wall opened and they walked into the back into the backyard and disappeared. And the armed robbers came, broke the door, came into the house and find nobody. Think about that. If God has done something wonderful for somebody, that should be a reason why you should ask for it. Anything God has done for somebody, you qualify to receive the same. Now let me continue to ask the question. Why do people, why do death take people suddenly? We've talked about the reason is evil, envy, jealousy, wickedness. Please, please. Why? Somebody should jump in. The time ran out. It was like a lot of a certain time, too. Their time ran out. Their time ran out. They were given time and they didn't want to repent. Some people, God has given them enough time and they did not want to repent. They didn't want to change their ways. They are very rebellious. That's why people who are very rebellious and very real strong people should beware. Strong-willed people negatively are always taken out. You'll be telling the person, don't go there, don't do this. That's the very same thing they want to go and do and they perish. That's it. I'm giving all of you opportunity to put in put in your input before I con I continue. Mm -hmm. 
The spirit of could it be also the devil wants to take them out, good people? Okay, could, could you say that again? Could it be the devil wants to take them out? Because uh, my daughter and her husband and the two kids, uh, this was about 15, 16 years ago, they were over, um, they were on their way to my house. It was Super Bowl Sunday, and they got hit head on head on by a guy driving 60 miles an hour. They were driving 50 miles an hour. The car looked like a pancake. If you could have seen that car, you would say nobody lived, and they just got through with scratches. Scratches. I think the devil wanted to take them all out, kill that whole family, but the Lord saved them. There you go. Powerful. Yes. Powerful, Barbara. Yes. Is that Miss Barbara? <laughs> You should have seen that car flat as a pancake. Wow. Look, head on, 60 miles an hour. They should have died. Everybody should have died. But the right. Lord would not allow it. He wouldn't allow that devil to take them out. There you go. Miss Barbara? Yes. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Let, 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 let's begin from where she has. She has started they talk in reality. There is no human being. Remember what I told you. Humans are greater than angels in terms of power. But angels, in terms of being, they can fly. In a second, they can do this, change thing, all of that. Ahead of humans because they are, they are heaven bound. But also I want to tell you, that there is a place you reach with the Lord, that all things are possible. Glory travel is part of our heritage. You can be in more than one place at the same time. This has been happening. I have experienced it, so I'm not telling you what I do not know. So it's not just to angels. All it needs is for you to be faithful to the Lord, obedient to the Lord. What happened to angels? I mean, angels of God, I'm not talking of demons. Uh, or devils will begin to happen to you their lifestyle you begin to live an angelic life but what i'm saying is there is no angel that was created in the image and likeness of god only humans are we are the most privileged creature ever made ever There's many of many of us do not even understand our position as rulers on the earth very sad Satan doesn't like any human being, even those, even those wicked rulers on the earth. He doesn't like them. He only uses them. He hates them. He hates them so much. Why? Because we are his replacement on the earth. We are also his replacement in the heart of God. Everything God gave to the devil, we got it seven times and more. Especially with the resurrection of Jesus, we got too much. The devil only uses people and when he doesn't need them, he knocks them off. He do them in and he doesn't care about them. He does not care about anybody except himself. I want you to know that. The spirit of death primarily, primarily is sent as a hatred. Remember what is the primary drive of devils and demons. The primary drive of the organization of, of Lucifer is very strong hatred absolute envy and desire to kill those are the three please write it down for me absolute envy mighty hatred and the desire to kill please please 
the person that write things for me, please write it and send it to me. Those are the three fiery drive. God doesn't have any drive other than just one drive. Love. And that's it. That's all. Love and the desire to see you happy. That's all. Those two things. Love and the desire to see you happy. Joyful. That's all. That's the difference between God and the devil. This one is moved by absolute envy, mighty hatred, and a desire to kill. Those are the three things that are his drive, his, his, his biggest passion. And he never tells anybody when he want to take them, do them in. Okay. Sudden death comes to people. Number one, when we do not take care of our physical self what do i mean you do not spend time you don't take your vitamins you don't have your nutrients i have been with people who are born again spirit filled mighty men and women of god who didn't care for themselves and they didn't last long they became unnecessarily fat and died look at ch spurgeon and the rest of them Statistics has shown that the people of God have not much discipline to stay healthy. We want to be healed, but we do not want to stay cured. Humans want God to help them, but we do not want to participate in the help. You want to eat, 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 drink, drink, drink. But you do not want to go out for a walk, to swim, to run, to exercise. I know of people who have all manners of exercise machine in their home. Trade meals, this, muscle pull. I used to go to their home to go and use it because nobody was using it. They have it all. It was just there. I'm talking of black people, Asian people, African American, Caucasian, Jewish, Arabs, they have it all in their home. They never use it. And then you're having a I headache. Have, uh huh. I have, I have all the equipment. I don't use it. There you go. Call, call me and let's talk about it so that you don't do yourself in. It's not fair. It's not fair to have to have those things that should help you to live long and enjoy life and then you die young. 70 years is too little for you to live on earth. You, used to, you, you need to live to be at least a hundred and something. That's the promise of God. Why should you just live to be 50, 60 and, and perish? Or 70 and you are gone. Whereas 70 years is when you start your second phase of being alive. Big creativity, big money making happen at those stage. God trusts you with big stuff. Because years has taught you a lot. A lot of people do not take care of themselves. And so their body cannot cope with the stress and problems and sickness. And they gave up and they gave up. Your, your body gives up. Sometimes your body gives up. Even before your mind and spirit gives up. So sudden death happens. I was talking with a lady today. And she was telling me that. Um, I don't know whether anybody from Africa is on the line today. On the, on the conference call line. There's something that I want to stress. Is there anybody from Africa that is on the conference call line? Okay, nobody. Yes. Who is yes? This is Maria. Okay, Maria, who again?
Okay, nobody. Okay. Miss D from California or Miss L, are you there? Or Miss M from New York? Okay, they are not there. Okay, this is the reason why I was saying this. A woman called me today and said that a ghost, a ghost uh, slapped the sister and the sister fell down. That is not true. Normally, when you hear that a ghost slaps somebody and kills somebody, it's normally stroke. Stroke is what we call ghost slap. Because that's how we sound like. And stroke, before you even have a stroke, there are signs. Your body is giving you different signs and wonders. <laughs> Your body is giving you different signs and wonders why you should go and get checked. In many countries, people will save millions of their country money under their pillow or somewhere in a basket hidden away in the house, in the bedroom. And nobody knows there is money there. And they will never go to go and spend that money to be checked, to have their physical, to have blood work, scan their brain, Look at what is going on on tissues, bones, and every kind of stuff. They don't do it. So suddenly, death comes and kills them. They give up on life, or life give up on them. And they say it was a ghost that killed them. Many a times, people work so hard for the medical doctor. We work hard, we get sick, we go and give it to the doctors. No vacation, nothing. We are not attentive to our body shouting. You are having a headache. I had a headache for a long time. I thought because I thought that because I was born, when, since I was young, I always have migraine headache. So I thought that is just it. Till, until one day, Geneva, go into action. Please, please, please talk to the person when it happened again. Okay. Until one day, I decided, I decided that um, I knew what killed my father. I read the history. I knew what took away most of my uncles. I knew what kind of sickness took them away. And I knew at what age it took them away. And I started having a similar pattern was about to happen to me. I said, oh no. Because I heard Kenneth Copeland say something. I heard Jesse Duplane say something. You see, if cancer took your dad or mom at the age of 50, you better be prepared that at the age of 50, cancer will come after you. The spirit of death will want to take you out through cancer. It's, the spirit of death is not going to come to you face to face and say, here am I. He always want to take you out through something. Or through somebody if not through yourself if your family members began to have mental problem at the age of 40 when once it is 39 and a half for you to clock 40 signs of mental problem begin to show up because let me show you how this thing works they work in patterns Patterns, patterns, that's how they work. They work in a cycle. Cycle. They will kick in, they are keeping a record of what happened in your family. At the exact time that your father declared bankruptcy when he was 60, that's the time bankruptcy will want to come to you. Unless you understand seasons and cycles. That's how this thing works. They work by cycle. They, they are keeping record of everything that is happening about you. You better believe it. At the exact time your mom had a divorce, they will enforce it at that exact time in your life. That same age and time, they will strike at that time. If you don't understand 
cycles and seasons. And even if it did not happen on your own side, but the person you are marrying, it happened to that person, it's going to affect you big time. That person is going to do you in. That person is going to divorce you. That person, something will begin to happen. And a lot of people do not know this. That that is how sudden death happens. Sudden death happens because of the visitations of cycles. Listen to me. Sudden death happens because of the visitations of cycles. Please let me ask most of you. It seems that many of you are tired of watching my videos on YouTube. So that's why uh, by next week we are going to have a break for quite some time. We have about a thousand and something videos. You can go and watch those ones. We'll have a break. I mean, you can call me on the phone. But we might not have conferences going on. I'm going to work that out. Because I've looked at the statistics. People are not watching. It seems I've given you too much. So I'm, I don't want you to die of obesity of the word of God. So I'm going to allow you guys to go and watch. You see, it's only a foolish person who has. You have all this. That are poured into the internet. You have all these great teachings. And you still want to go about shopping. You'll be a fool to do that. Personally, I like to stay in one place with one person all my life. That's why when I pick on the teachings, the teachings and ministry of Kenneth E. Hagen, Sr., who has gone to glory, Derek Prince, T.L. Osborne, and Catherine Coleman, I was done. I was done. I mean, I can check out. If God reveals something to me, I will try to check out whose other minister has had that revelation. That's all. That's all I'm checking on them. I don't listen to their sermon. I don't listen to their teaching. I don't have any time for that. I have so much I want to accomplish that I don't have any time to run around. So sometimes, please, I'm begging you, don't send me videos of other people's ministry because I'm not going to watch it. I'm sorry. If I can concentrate to be in the presence of God, there is nothing God cannot use me to do. I'm trying to develop those disciplines. So I don't have time to go and be learning about somebody who doesn't even have any discipline in those areas. So many of you are still shopping and when you shop and you see a video, you email it to me. I just delete them. That's what I do. I'm sorry. I, wanna, I want me. I want to go to the mountain myself. I want to go there myself until I hit what I want with God. Then I go to the next level. I'm not going to be sitting down listening to somebody blasting out. Maybe that person has had his own breakthrough. Let, let, let me tell you guys the secret. There is only one secret to power. One secret to miracle signs and wonders. One secret to riches. One secret to devotion. One secret to the Holy Ghost. It is one thing. Read the Bible. Use it to meditate. Use it to pray. Use it to sing. Be in the presence of God long enough with the word, with your song, with your dance. That's all you need. You don't need all this other drama from preachers. If you practice that, you're good to go. Every power any pastor or prophet exercises on earth, you'll have it. I'm serious. All you need is discipline to practice the presence, to be in the presence of God. Sometimes, close down what you are doing. Like sometimes I close down for a week or two or three or a month. I close down. Why? I want power. I want power. Power means a lot to me than anything. 